Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we're talking about this. This is a computer I just built. It's actually pretty awesome. This is a mini ITX computer and it's sort of an HCPC, a home theater PC meant for gaming in the living room doing your video watching tasks. Maybe you could even jerry rig it as a DVR replacement because we all know that Time Warner Cable provides only the best DVRs and you would of course never want to replace that with something like this. So this is Built in an Antec ISK600 case, we've got an Intel G3258 in here, which is their new dual-core processor, affordable at the price of around $60 to $70. And the whole build is $665, bucks, so it is sort of a budget-ish build. It's definitely teetering on mid-range, but I have sort of classified it as budget. We've got a 750 Ti in there, which plays every game pretty much perfectly on high settings. Uh, you will need to drop down to medium for a few games, like... Metro Last Light and Battlefield, but I have benchmarks for you at the end that will showcase uh, performance in games. And the board is just an ASRock MITX Z97 board. It's got AC wireless built into it, so you won't have to get a separate adapter. You won't need uh, wired Ethernet. Of course, we always recommend that if you have it available in the living room environment you're setting this up in. But it'll work on wireless. It'll work with your gigabit connections up to the spec that AC allows, so certainly much better than the previous uh, wireless G and B all those now the board is Z97 so it is capable of overclocking it's got a decent VRM it's got a couple phases on there so it's enough to get a basic overclock on the G3258 which we've been able to push it at least 20% I've gotten it up to almost 50% overclock I wouldn't run it at that for extended periods of time but uh, certainly 20% should be almost no problem with this processor, especially with the board's basic VRM setup and the Be Quiet CPU cooler we have on there. So that will keep things relatively cool and quiet, which is always a good thing in an HCBC since you're going to be set up in an extended uptime environment that's probably uh, running almost 24-7 in your living room. And because of that reasoning, we've got an Edge PSU in here, an Antec Edge, 550 watt PSU, that is enough power for everything in here. Enough power for an upgrade if you wanted a 760 or a 970 instead, or probably you want to upgrade the CPU before that, really. Uh, so you do have enough power for both a CPU and a GPU upgrade, depending on what route you go. And the Edge PSU remains relatively silent. It's not passive, but the fan only spins up when it's necessary, and it's got a, a toggle switch for the LEDs. So if you prefer this to be more discreet with all the LEDs off, just unplug this strip uh, the strip in the front here, there's a, an LED strip. You can unplug that and you can toggle the switch on the power supply. And then you got no lights, so you can tuck it in a corner, hide it, and let it run as a discrete home theater PC. As far as RAM, we've got HyperX Fury RAM. Runs perfectly fine for gaming. We've benchmarked it. Uh, really no complaints there at all. Looks pretty good. I chose white, but there's blue, black, red also. And for the SSD, I would recommend the Crucial MX100 SSD. Do note that you will have to remove the 3.5 inch drive uh, scaffolding, the cage, in the ISK600 as a result of the mid-size CPU cooler we selected. You probably need to use a really uh, low profile Silverstone or, uh, or one of those other small coolers if you wanted to use the 3.5 inch bays. Maybe a liquid cooler would be in order but it was removed from this. So you're only, you've only got two 2.5 inch SSD slots. If you want more than that, get a different cooler and throw a hard drive in there. But for, for my reasons, two SSDs is fine and then I just go to a media server for the rest. So that is the build, pretty small, pretty portable. As far as the benchmarks, this performs pretty well actually in just about everything. Borderlands, uh, the pre-sequel, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's a modern title, so I benchmarked it. We run at about uh, a little over 70 FPS at almost max settings in Borderlands, the pre-sequel. In Grid Autosport, which is one of the best optimized games I've ever tested, it's approaching uh, 40 to 50 FPS, so, and that's at almost max settings. So if you lower the settings to high, then you're definitely going to be running pretty close to 60, maybe medium high at worst. And 60 is what I define as pretty perfectly playable. So th there's your alliteration for the day. Uh, beyond that, Metro Last Light, always a very good bench to use for gaming performance. You would probably need to run at about medium settings because on high and very high, we were just above 30, just under 40 for the average FPS. So you would want to run at a medium, uh, maybe hybrid medium low settings for a game like Metro Last Light that's more demanding. And that does start bottlenecking on the CPU more than the GPU in this instance. So that would be your upgrade if you're trying to play games like Last Light, like Crisis 3, 
every other game for the most part plays pretty darn well at high settings pretty darn well at medium if it is a higher end game that's more demanding and then you've got a lot of games that'll play perfectly fine at high and ultra settings like league dota uh wow pretty much any mmo at this point and of course borderlands and things like that so that is the build 665 bucks click the link in the description below for all the product links for my write-up on this and you can see the benchmark graphs in more detail and i will see you all next time peace